I'm so thirsty. I wonder if there's anything I can drink today. Lately in the United States, some states have taken to banning plastic straws. And surprisingly, this single issue has led to anger and public outcry for several reasons. Now you're probably wondering, why should I give a shit about plastic straws? Well, you found the right YouTube channel because I'm going to explain to you why you should give a shit and why this issue may concern you. Let's get started. This is Bart Coppens and welcome to Biodiversity News. Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm going to ask you one small favor, and that is to pay attention. I know that's really difficult to do because most of you are 15 year olds with the attention span of a hamster, and I know we aren't on YouTube to do serious business. But still, I ask your attention for today for at least one small hot take that I think will concern you. Let's get started. Is this justified? Is this effective? Most people found themselves asking questions about this policy. First of all, here I have some science with counter arguments and arguments that defend it. And we are going to look into both. But first of all, I'm going to explain to you briefly why plastic is a problem. Now, I am going to do something that no other YouTuber has done before on YouTube. And that is, I'm going to assume that you are smart. Maybe it is a little bit narcissistic to assume that everybody that subscribes to me is smarter than the average person, but I like to think so. Anyways. It's about the plastic problem. You're probably familiar with that. But for the people who lived in a nuclear bunker for the previous 50 years, let me just quote some statistics. Major rivers around the world carry an estimated 1.15 to 
2.14 million of tons of plastic into the sea every year. For those who don't understand numbers, that's a fucking lot of plastic. A massive 8 million tons of plastic are washed into the ocean um, from plastic waste inputs. Now this is a problem because plastic takes a shitload of time to break down. About 200 years or more. And it's a big fucking problem. Just go to any developing country or maybe even a non-developing country go into the ocean and see how much trash there is currently plastic is such a huge fucking problem that in every liter of seawater there are microscopical parts of plastic right that's fucking bad and there's also millions and millions of tons of plastic just being washed around in the ocean killing animals killing the ecosystem left and right now this is not the point this is just a basic introduction okay plastic is bad that's my point and i really don't want to elaborate on that because it would make a long video even longer and i'm going to assume that you have a basic education okay that you at least read the newspapers once in your life and that you understand that plastic is an ecological problem did we establish that good so next some uh, heroes cringe took it upon themselves to say let's change the world we're going to stop people from consuming plastic by banning plastic straws that's right let me quote plastic straw bans are going into effect around the US California recently became the first state to nix plastic plastic straws from restaurant tables Starting in 2019, customers in its state will have to ask if they want a straw. In the US, 500 million straws are used daily. But in California, um, restaurants are being banned from serving customers plastic straws unless they ask. And Seattle has asked them as well. In July, Seattle became the first major U.S. city to ban single-use plastic straws and utensils. Now, does that sound like a bad idea to you? To me, it sounds like at least an idea with good intentions, right? And it may be a little bit inconvenient when you go to a restaurant and you get a paper straw instead of a plastic one. Or you have to ask for one. I know that really hurts, that really hurts. It's so uncomfortable, right? Now the real question is, what is the impact of all of this? Are these countermeasures useful in any way? Or are they bullshit? Well, we're going to find out today, because I dug up some science, because I'm a sciencey guy, folks, that's right. I may act silly, but secretly, I can pretend to be smart. So here I dug up some counter arguments, okay? So please keep in mind, these are not my words, but they are the most convincing counter arguments I could find. And after that, I'm going to argue some points that defend the plastic straw ban, and then we are going to come to a conclusion. So don't, so keep those angry comments to yourself. What I'm about to read is not my opinion. However, it is science that debunks some of these bans, okay? We have to listen to both sides. I'm not defending any side yet. Let's get started. When California banned the single-use plastics back in 2016, the state saw a reduction of 40 million pounds of plastic per year. Sounds good, right? However, a scientist who researched that in 2019 found that it inadvertently had eliminated in-house recycling. And that, in turn, resulted in the increase of trash bags by 12 million pounds. The study's author added that uh, to overlook this fact was to overstate the regulation's welfare gains. What does this mean? What does this mean? Now, uh, I, I referenced the study in this video. Um, but it basically means that um, plastic bags are bad for the environment. 
However, you should consider the fact that some people who buy these plastic bags, they reuse them, okay? Some people use these plastic bags multiple times. And that's actually sustainable. However, by banning these plastic bags, and uh, for example, you're forcing people to use other types of, uh, of bags, for example, a paper bag that doesn't last as long, uh, that means that you pre prevent people from recycling. And it's interesting that they, they banned the plastic bags, but still, overall, the amount of trash people uh, produce, it increased instead of decreased. The plastic use decreased, but the overall amount of trash they make, it increased. And that's really interesting, because uh, by banning one thing with good intentions, it actually made the problem, in this case, worse. So I would say there's at least one study that serves as a counter-argument. Let's continue. Similarly, after the Scottish government brought in a plastic bag tax, it conducted a two-year investigation published in 2005 comparing the life cycles of a single plastic bag with that of a paper bag. The conclusion was that the paper bag has more adverse impact than a plastic bag for most of the environmental issues considered. A better response, evidently, would have been to try encourage customers to use plastic bags multiple times. In 2012, Ireland managed to do precisely that, reducing the plastic bag use per person from 328 to 21. So that's interesting. This, these studies, they show me that banning something does not always have the intended effect. And that the main problem with, in this case, we are discussing plastic bags, which is not the only form of plastic, of course, but we will get into that later, okay. But it means that this, this ban, which was supposed to uh, reduce environmental damage, made the damage worse in this case, okay. So you have to remember that for a second before we continue. So that means the problem is definitely more complicated than it appears to be on this, on the, on the first moment and uh, instinctively we will say hey let's ban the use of plastics altogether but if you think about it if you have a plastic bag that you can use multiple times and you actually use it multiple times this is more sustainable than buying a paper bag and throwing it away because you cannot reuse those but you can reuse plastic so by banning something that is reusable you actually end up creating more trash because people choose something disposable which happens to be paper, not plastic. Another counter argument I found is, it is clear that much more needs to be done uh, to help developing countries engineer better systems of plastic wage management. Well, I agree. The same is true for fishing, of course, which is in desperate need of reform. As Bjorn Lomborg, president of the Copenhagen Consensus Center said, more than 70% of all plastics in our oceans today, about 190,000 ton, comes from fisheries with buoys and lines making up the majority. So, I don't dispute this fact. Okay, these fisheries are also polluting our oceans. But does it make it okay that we do it? No. And does that make it a counter-argument? against preventive measures, polluting us, preventing us from polluting the ocean? I don't think so. It's again the same argument with the stake. It's pointing the finger like, yeah, I'm doing a bad thing, but he is all doing a much worse thing and it doesn't make it okay. So the, f I, the first two arguments were convincing, but the other things I can find are not very convincing because in my opinion, trying to, to play off the problem as a minor problem by saying, yeah, this country pollutes more, or yeah, this company pollutes more, so it, we shouldn't do anything about uh, ourselves. That's, that's a weak counter-argument. So, currently we've been talking about plastic in general, but not about straws. Well, the whole, whole point of this video was to discuss plastic straws. And I feel a lot of people uh, don't consider that point. So let's continue by taking a look at plastic straws and if they are a problem. Today, an estimated 500 million plastic straws are used in the US every day. And one study suggests that 8.3 billion will end up on the American beaches. This is unacceptable, clearly, 
But in the interest of perspective, let's stand back for a moment. As reported by National Geographic, of the 8 million tons of plastic that flow into the ocean every year, plastic straws account for just 0.025%. So that means plastic straws are very insignificant when you look at the big picture. And I agree, plastic straws are very insignificant if we look at take, if take a look at the big picture. But does that mean that you shouldn't try to limit your usage of them? I don't know. I think it's a very shitty thing to say. The, the thing is that this whole big problem, yes, that we created, consists of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small problems. Plastic bags, fishing nets, microplastics, and so on and so on. And I feel like you are trivializing that problem by saying, ah, plastic straws are only 0.025%. Well, that's still something. And you cannot tackle the whole problem at once. Because if you have a complicated worldview that is not black and white, then you are going to conclude that you can divide the big plastic problem into millions of smaller problems. And straws are one of these smaller problems that are part of the bigger problem. And again, again, and again, these counter arguments seem to focus on distracting people from the fact that it is a problem, even though it's a small percentage of the problem, I agree. But why do people keep saying that's not a reason to do anything about it? And again, I keep hearing counter arguments like plastic straw bans alone won't change much. Less than 9% of all the plastic we use every day gets recycled. Instead, most ends up in landfills or floating out in the ocean. Maybe so, but let's look at a more impact of plastic straws. Here are some fun facts. Plastic straws are the seventh most collected waste item from beaches. The same year the Ocean Conserva Conservancy rallied volunteers from 112 countries for their own beach cleanup. They further collected a staggering 80 million pounds of trash and plastic products from beaches. Amongst their hull, they collected over 400,000 plastic straws. How many straws are on our beaches? Denise Hardesty and Chris Wilcox, two Australian scientists, said to find out. They spent five years looking and assessing the waste collected on the US shores. Their scientific research published in 2005-15 found that there are 7.5 million straws on America's coastlines. 7.5 million straws, okay, on our coastlines. The same team extrapolated that figure globally. As a result, they estimated that there are 437 million to 8.3 billion plastic straws on the world's, world's beaches and shores. That's a whole lot of straws, a whole fucking lot of them. Unfortunately for the environment, plastic straws do not biodegrade, basically meaning that they do not decay naturally in a way that is not harmful. This is a key uh, factor affecting the environmental impact of plastic straws on mar marine life and our oceans. They do, however, degrade over time, which means plastic straws break down into smaller particles. The resulting particles are named microplastics. To add to this problem, most plastic straws are made of polypropane, which degrades slowly. In fact, they can take over 200 years to break down. So this trash is in our ocean for 200 years. That's almost four generations of people, if not more. The resulting degradation has been found to never leave our seas. This means that it's almost impossible to eliminate plastic straws from the environment once they've reached our oceans. Microplastics are so small that they are virtually impossible to clean up. And this all makes one, one, one big issue caused by a whole lot of uh, very small plastic pieces. 
And finally, 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 after reading a whole lot of boring things, I finally got to make my point. After considering all the against and for arguments of banning plastic straws, there is one major thing that caught my attention. Most of the counter arguments against banning plastic straws seem to rely on the fact that oh China is making more pollution than us so who cares oh plastic straws are only 0.25% of all the plastic in the ocean so who cares or uh, oh the Philippines Vietnam are dumping more plastic in the ocean than us so who cares oh yeah you know what plastic bags are a bigger problem than plastic straws who, who cares and even Donald Trump had the same argument because Donald Trump had the following thing to say about the, the ban of plastic straws. We have bigger issues to focus on. Was he right? In theory, yes, yes, Donald Trump is correct, but not for the right reasons. Because it's true, we should focus on bigger issues. We should try to ban all the fucking plastic from society, but that's not what Donald Trump is saying. Donald Trump is basically saying here, just like all the other people who were against plastic straws and who become so angry about such, such an insignificant thing, their argument is, we should totally ignore this issue because there are other things happening in the world. Yeah, people, people are hungry, people, uh, are in wars, people live in poverty. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem too. But caring about things is not mutually exclusive. Okay, that okay, you know, it's 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 not true that you shouldn't care about small things because there are also big problems. Okay, you can care about small problems and big problems at the same time. It is not mutually exclusive, and all the people who are trying to distract the attention or trying to divert it to say, yeah, plastic straws are insignificant. We should, you know, we, should, we shouldn't bother with them. Well, I agree, I agree. However, you are trying to distract the attention away from the issue of the environment altogether. Your point is not that we should take more effective measures. Your point is that we should take no measures at all. Why? Because there's bigger problems. But whenever people try to tackle the bigger problems, people lose their fucking mind. So let me ask a question to the critics of this policy. If your main argument against this, okay, is that we shouldn't do it because there are bigger issues at hand, then how come you make such a big issue out of a small issue because what all of you are saying is well this small issue is so small we shouldn't care about it then why do you make such a big deal out of it how can you expect people to make big changes if you lose your mind over small changes that's so weird to me how can you say that a long time ago I do think we have bigger problems than plastic straws. You know, it's interesting about plastic straws. So you have a little straw, but what about the plates, the wrappers and everything else that are much bigger and they're made of the same material? So uh, the straws are interesting. Everybody focuses on the straws. There's a lot of other things to focus, it's, but it's an, interest, it's an interesting question. And I actually agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. Plastic straws are not our main problem. Our main problem is we are fucking up the planet. But that's not what you care about, is it? What you really care about is making sacrifices because people don't want to make sacrifices. You ban plastic straws, people lose their mind. You try to do anything positive, anything small, and people just lose their minds. People aren't willing to sacrifice anything. Everybody, everybody pretends to want a better planet. Everybody pretends that they hate pollution, that they hate trash in the environment, that, that they hate, hate everything that's going on on our planet. Poverty, 
injustices. But whenever you have to sacrifice something, oh no, no, that's too much. People don't want to give up their comfort, even if it's something as small as a fucking plastic straw. And that's the problem, and that is the main problem here that I'm having. I don't care about plastic straws. I don't care if you buy or use plastic straws. <sighs> Here's the point. If you want to change the world to something better, you have to sacrifice something. But not everything. Okay? You know, me? I travel a lot by airplane for work. For example, recently I went to Cambodia. That uses a lot of fuel. That's pollution, right? I eat meat. Eating meat is not good for the environment, but I do it. Instead, I make other sacrifices. Instead, it doesn't mean helping the environment. People seem to think that if you want to help the environment, you have to be some kind of radical, vegan, animal rights activist, living in the forest, eating raw vegetables, driving with horse carriage everywhere. That's not true. That's not true. You can go on vacation five times per year to the Bahamas for all I care and you can still do something for the environment, okay? You can eat a big fat juicy steak every day, you can use plastic straws and you can still help the environment. Because it's about what you are willing to sacrifice. Maybe you can take public transport more often instead of driving a car. Maybe your garden, maybe you should let your garden be a little bit overgrown with wild plants and wild animals and not make a neat, perfect garden. Maybe you can stop eating meat, maybe you can stop making children, but you don't have to do all those things, okay? Do you understand? What I'm trying to say... What I am trying to say is that to make a better world, everybody has to sacrifice something small. But that makes people freak out because they are scared that they have to sacrifice everything. And that's why they become angry if you tell them they cannot use something as small and useless as a plastic straw and make a big deal out of it like they are a big baby. Because people are afraid that they can't go on vacation anymore because jet fuel, it pollutes the environment, which is true. People are afraid that they are forced to become a vegan because eating meat is bad for the environment, which is also true. But you don't do have to do all those things. You can eat meat, you can ride an airplane, but you can say, hey, I will take the train to work instead of the car. And then you are still helping the environment and you can still do the things that you enjoy. Maybe you can say, hey, okay, I use a lot of plastic. I use plastic bags, I use plastic straws, that doesn't make you a bad person. Instead of that, you can do something else. Like, okay, maybe I will cut back on my meat consumption. You know, it's possible to, to do one bad thing and compensate it with something good. You don't have to sacrifice your whole life, your whole life to be some kind of, some kind of crazy eco, eco fascist, uh, don't know, te terrorist, Yuna bomber who lives in the woods without technology. You know what I'm trying to say? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, right? Like I said, I assume that you are smart, not stupid. My point is you don't have to... You're not expected to, to change the world, okay? You are a person, you like comfort, you like turning the heater high. Maybe it's not good for the environment, who cares? But instead of that, maybe you can do something else to help out instead. It's about the things that you are willing to sacrifice, not the things that you are willing to keep. Do you understand? And let's take a look at my life, for example. I personally, I use a lot of plastic. My hobby, it takes a lot of plastic. Take a look. All these plastic here, all these plastic boxes are mine. These are all the plastic boxes that I use to breed butterflies and moths, which is my hobby. These are my plastic cages that I use to breed insects in. I use a lot of plastic. So I am not pointing the finger at you, my dear followers. I'm not saying that you are bad for using plastic. I'm not saying that you are bad for eating meat. I enjoy meat. I enjoy using plastic. 
I do bad things too. It's not about the bad things that you do, it's about the good things that you are willing to sacrifice. Yes, I do bad things too, okay. But I also made some sacrifices. Personally, I always take public transport or ride on my bike. I try to cut back on my fuel consumption. Second of all, I do a lot for the environment. Because of course I have my background with biology, I study insects. I also try to educate other people about it online. I try to reduce my meat consumption because I know eating a lot of meat is bad for your health and your environment. No, I am not a vegetarian. I am not a vegan. But I try to reduce the habit, okay? I try not to buy useless things that I throw away. A lot of people buy a lot of garbage, like uh, like plastic decorations for the garden, you don't need those. I only try to buy the things that I need. And trust me, I am not some crazy, crazy animal rights activist living in the forest. I don't live in a house built from mud and sticks and rocks. I still enjoy life, I just make some sacrifices. So let me ask you, why are some people so unable to make any sacrifices at all? Because that is what it is really about. It is about stubborn people who don't give a shit about this world. Who are just trying to take the maximum out of everything, you know. They have to... They, they don't want to sacrifice anything. Not even a fucking plastic straw. And that's what really angers me. Just just look at these disgusting attitudes of these people. I mean, okay, I agree. Maybe, maybe banning plastic straws isn't going to do much. I agree. But it's still going to do something, even if it's something small. And why are you going to, to take a shit on that and laugh at it? I don't understand why you would do that. You just, just take a look at these people here mocking it. I've always said if they outlaw straws, only outlaws will have straws. That's I've right. said that. You have said that. that. You've heard me say that. I have heard you, and I am a defender of the straw. <laughs> yes. I will have you know. Is this I'm a straw, straw argument? Activist. I have now turned into a straw activist. I will be handing out straws after the show of varying sizes. Can I give you a straw uh, poll? I guess you may. Yeah. Remember all the straws you had when you were a kid, by the silly way? Silly straws! Yes. Around the best. You know what? Death penalty. Death. If you have a silly straw. <laughs> Silly straw, you are electrocu electrocuted. <laughs> Great, now my mouth is full of lipstick. Anyway, that's what really pisses me off. And that's the fucking problem here. The problem is not normal people who go to work every day, who use plastic straws when they go to Burger King and have a nice cola. The problem is not the average person here who maybe struggles with you know, finances, doesn't have enough food, has to buy plastic bags maybe to get the groceries home from store, has to take a car because they live in an urban area where there's no public transport. I understand. I'm not trying to shame people into submission. I'm not telling you that you are a bad person for living a normal life. It's okay, but the real problem is people in society that don't want to sacrifice anything, not even one cent, nothing. They, they don't want to sacrifice anything to change the planet for the worse. Even worse, they laugh at the people who do. And I agree, plastic straw banning maybe isn't that efficient. Maybe isn't going to do much. But it's going to do something. But if you keep making a big fucking deal out of small issues like this, then we are never going to make change, changes on big issues, all right? Because everybody is too scared to make big changes. Because you already made a big deal out of something small. So why would they do something big? Because that's going to cause an even bigger apocalyptical freak out. So this is really my video where I tell you how frustrated I am with journalists and just general ignorant people, you know, who are just ridiculing all of this. Try to be constructive instead. And last but not least, yes, try to sacrifice something. Okay, 
Maybe you are old, maybe you are 60 or 70 and you'll be dead in a few decades. But our generation is still left with all the trash that you built for us and we have to clean it up. So why don't you try to help us to change this planet for something better instead? You ignorant fools. This is Bart out. Hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, is there anything else you would like to see me talk about in biodiversity news? Then leave something in the comments. Maybe we can do some positive news as well. We can talk about rare species or extinct species. Anything you want. See ya. Oh. Don't forget, my channel is unsupported by YouTube. It relies on donations for 100% via crowdfunding. Consider subscribing to my Patreon or helping me financially in other ways, because it makes, helps me make videos like these. See ya!
So you are still watching after all this time? Wow, I would like to say thank you for watching Biodiversity News. Biodiversity News is my new mini-series on YouTube where I comment on news, updates and research regarding biology and biodiversity all across the globe. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Why? For much of my YouTube channel is completely demonetized and I rely on 100% crowdfunding to get this channel going. If you are a subscriber of my Patreon, you are also able to vote on the next subject of this episode. 